What's up, hillbillies? Today, I'm gonna be showing you how to grow your own sweet potatoes in a five gallon bucket. So, I'm gonna get right to it. It's a extremely fast process. I was sitting here and wasn't trying to grow anything and the sweet potato that I had was just in natural light and just started to sprout one day. So, that got me on the idea of growing sweet potatoes. Now, sweet potatoes and potatoes you can continuously eat. They're a great source of food. So, this is a very easy way to grow it and because they're in a five gallon bucket, you could bring start some and grow them through the winter time. So you got, this is called the sweet potato slip. Every single node and joint will actually produce a sweet potato vine. So what we'll do is uh, we're gonna snip these, these. Now, what I've done, I've already harvested this once. This has regrown since there. But basically you're gonna pull one of these off. I'm gonna demonstrate this. Okay, that's pulled off. And you would just take this guy, stick it in, in a cup full of water. Now, I have already done that and harvested this once. So if you see this guy right here is an example of actually this did come from here. You can actually see the node that I picked it off of. So I started there. Today, we are then going to plant this. But I want you to notice, guys on the camera, every node right here, every plant where every leaf starts, there's a little, little nubby there right in between. That nubby could be the basis of a new root system. You see this one right here has roots right there. Here's another nubby and under there, there's three little bumps. Again, every single section. So sweet potatoes are very easy to propagate. It's called a sweet potato slip. You stick them in water. Now what do you do? Well, step two, this you wait a few days and this, the roots will form. After the roots are formed, very simple. We're gonna take the sweet potatoes, follow me. You're gonna snag yourself a five gallon bucket. You're then gonna take you're gonna drill holes in the bottom of that five gallon bucket. This is just a 3 8 inch drill bit. Just so there's good drainage. Flip it around, snag this guy here. And it's really this simple, make your own food. Got my compost. Fill it full. Want loose packed soil, all right. Loose, warm. Take this guy right here. I'm gonna go ahead and break off the leaves. All right. Just sink the roots underground. Push this in. Now I'm gonna water it. Especially where the root section is to prevent it from getting root, root shock. That's it. If you are in a rainier climate, you set this bucket outside, the natural rain should provide enough moisture for you that you don't have to do anything with it. If you're not, then you should keep on top of that. Take a look over here. I've got some other sweet potatoes that have already been started. Now you can do extra deep mulch gardening on top of it. And so we'll take a look at that next. You can see what happens to soil when it loses its moisture content. And this is bare exposed soil. So I'm gonna do one more step that other people may or may not do, but I'm gonna do it. Let's take this, we're gonna put straw on it. And we're gonna mimic root stout. Now, this isn't gonna do the root stout method where you're building the soil properties and all that good stuff. But what we are gonna have is we're gonna have a strong mulch that is gonna be a sacrificial layer that's gonna retain moisture in the soil that will also be the first to dry out and protect what's underneath. And maybe if we're lucky, we set this on the grass, we might get some insects or something that like to burrow and get some of the nutrients that come to that. So over to the chickens, by our bedding, just gonna grab what I use for root stout is hay. I know some people use straw. There are pros and cons. That's a different video. But I'm just gonna make sure that I'm gonna protect this. I'm gonna mulch, heavily mulch around it. And the goal of this is to block the light and prevent light from reaching the soil itself and drying it out. And when it does rain, which it hasn't in a while because it's been a very, very unusually hot time with climate change, as that's going on, when it does rain, this straw will be one more layer to help combat the soil drying out underneath. Sweet potatoes like soil. They will be damaged with prolonged drought. So again, real simple. Gonna take some straw and gonna mulch it. You don't have to do this step. If you wanna use wood chips with the back to Eden method, feel free to use wood chips with the back to Eden method. But again, you're just gonna mulch it. 
That's the biggest thing between conventional guarding and boost stout methods or back to Eden methods that I usually see people make is they do all this effort and then they leave the soil bare. Sometimes I just don't want to check on my plants every day. And that's definitely me. I don't want to check my plants every day. So I'm going to do everything I can so I do the least work possible, but it's also healthiest for the plants. There are a million ways to garden better than I garden, but I'm trying to go for the least work available. All right, so the last step is going to be as follows. We're going to take a little water this real good. Half of this is just transportation cost of me walking back and forth. I'm gonna just soak this down real well. This is gonna keep the plant cooler. It's gonna keep the roots cooler. It's gonna protect all that soil from actually getting exposed to the sun and drying out like this. Look, this right here is dried out so much so that I was able to just tip right out of the pot. We wanna avoid that. So again, guys, this is gonna be soaking. Later, when I come back, it's gonna look bone dry. Not sure if you noticed while we were mulching this, it has not rained here in over a month. And I just peeled back the top layer of straw and underneath it, it was moist and nice and you could see stuff was living in there, breaking stuff down. You want that for your plants, that's why we're doing the mulching. The other thing is, this is your standard yam or sweet potato, what we think of as sweet potatoes. You'll notice that this looks slightly different than these. These look different than this. Here's what's going on. This sweet potato slip right here is from an Asian style yam. So I went to the Asian store, I bought different kinds of sweet potatoes, they're growing those. These sweet potato greens are actually delicious. You can take the baby greens and the new growth, break them off and use these in salads. Do not do this with normal potatoes, but with sweet potatoes, as the vines grow like this throughout the year, you can actually eat the greens. They are rich in nutrients and antioxidants, they're basically like spinach, but they're not bitter like spinach. The reason you don't find them in shelf stores is because they don't last long. They're not very shelf stable, but you can pick them. They're one of the few crops that while the tuber is growing the next few months, as they grow, you're just going to get to eat the crop along the way. Then let's say winter comes around. You start buckets before winter. You just take this guy and you bring it inside your garage. Boom. Now it's protected from freezing cold conditions or you set it on your porch or whatever, or you, you set it in a window. Now it's on the inside. You can actually grow this through four seasons. So this is a great one. Another thing, this is an unassuming vine. As you can see here, this looks like nothing. Now imagine you had a clump of these just growing outside. Imagine the pot's not there. This looks like nothing. People would pass by and they have no idea that you have tons and tons of food growing. And what I would do is let's say this is several months from now. You come up here, you pull this slip, right? Because it's all the vines are growing. Remember, each section of leaf already has the capacity to turn into its own plant. So let's simulate it's winter. I'm going to cut the vines on the top. I'm gonna dip this in water, just like you see on the video from earlier. Once this sprouts roots, I'm gonna then propagate another sweet potato. I don't have to restart the slipping process. Very, very simple, guys. So remember to take that for what it's worth. And you should be able to produce all the food that you need all year round. This is one of the few crops you can do that. And it's so delicious. And there's something special. This potato here, these two haven't started yet. These are Japanese sweet potatoes, also known as Okinawan sweet potatoes. On screen now, you should see what the inside looks like. They're purple, they're beautiful. They're also $27 for three potatoes on Amazon. Super expensive. So you know what I did? I paid $27 for three sweet potatoes, but I'm not gonna eat them. I'm going to sprout them and then I'm gonna collect it. I'm gonna grow my own. I'm gonna have hundreds of pounds of this stuff until I'm sick of it. Why? Because I'm cheap and I like making money. I'm gonna get my $27 out of that, out of these sweet potatoes. So it's super simple guys. Again, in under five minutes, that was all the labor that was required to actually get you and your family a bountiful harvest of sweet potatoes. So we'll show you what that looks like when we harvest them here in a few months. And until then guys, like, subscribe, check out the other stuff, and we'll see you next time. Boom, bam, ba, da, ba, boom, bam. Boom, bam, ba, da, ba, boom, bam. Ba, ba, da,